Recording has started. Are you sure I'm not seeing? Um, I see it on my side. You see it on your side? Okay. Um, hey, Maria, do a mic check real quick. Oh, she's muted. Hello. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting, the regular meeting of the Dundee Township 708 Mental Health Board uh, to order. It is 6.33 p.m. on May 13th, 2021. Um, this meeting is being held remotely, uh, uh, consistent with the governor's uh, executive order. Well, you know what, I will, I will. I just lost somebody. So did I. Oh, Maria, for some reason you keep going muted. Oh, hi. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, you're good now. Yeah, I don't know why. Okay, consistent with the governor's executive order, this meeting is being held remotely. It's being recorded. Um, nope. And <laughs> uh, we have several members who are several members of the community who have joined us. I would like the person whose number ends in 797 to please take yourself off mute, star six, and identify yourself, please. Uh, President Sets, let me see if I can ask them to unmute. Okay. See if that responds. I'm not getting a response. Okay, well, we'll hold on for time being. Um, Maria, would you please take the roll? You're on okay. mute, Maria? Yes, yes, I got it, okay. Trustee Don Arimura. Present. Trustee Courtney, Courtney Bow. Here. Trustee Maria Borrero. Here. Supervisor Trish Gleese. Here. Trustee Cindy Olden. Present. Trustee Paul Setz. Here. Trustee Wendy Witt. Okay, all the, uh, all the members of the 708 Mental Health Board are in attendance. Um, I would like to introduce to everybody Courtney Bow, um, who's agreed to join the board. Alec Newshafer. Um, is moving out of state and has resigned and uh, Courtney Bow has been um, appointed uh, to carry out the rest of his term. Uh, so welcome, Courtney. Thank you. Um, okay, moving on uh, with tonight's business. Um, I'll enter entertain a motion to approve or amend the agenda as presented. I move. Second. Okay. Uh, are, they, are there any, um, uh, so we'll move on to discussion. Are there any, uh, is there any discussion around the agenda tonight? Uh, no, the only thing is under new business where it says election of board president and secretary, um, do we want to add a treasurer and a vice president was my only question, but that can be held till then. Yeah, we can do that as part of the discussion. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Um, Maria, would you please uh, do a voice call for a vote on the on the uh, motion to approve the agenda as presented? Yeah. Trustee Donnie Remora. Aye. Trustee Courtney Bow. Aye. Trustee Maria Orrero. Aye. Supervisor Trish Gleese. Aye. Trustee Cindy Olden. Aye. Trustee Paul Setz. Aye. Trustee Wendy Witt. I think Wendy gave an eye. Wendy, did you give an eye? Aye. I had the agenda covering up the mic. <laughs> 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 we have seven eyes. Okay, thank you, Maria. You're welcome. Um, 
Okay, I will enter, moving on to the next agenda item, uh, I will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes for the April 8th, 2021 so 708 Mental Health Board regular meeting. So move. Thank you, Don. Second, please. Second. Thank you, Courtney. Um, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, Maria, would you please yeah. uh, call the roll? Mm -hmm. Trustee Donna Remora. Aye. Trustee Courtney Bow. Aye. Trustee Maria Borrero. Aye. Supervisor Trish Gleese. Aye. Trustee Cindy Olden. Aye. Trustee Paul Setz. Aye. Trustee Wendy Witt. Aye. Okay, you have seven ayes. Hey, thank you, Maria. Uh, next item on the agenda is public comments. I will um, call your name or your phone number and ask you to unmute yourself. If you don't have any comments, please say no comment. Otherwise, uh, comments are limited to three minutes. Uh, so first up, um, Mark Avalar, uh, do you have any comment? Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to defer my comment, if I can, to item B under new business on the update on tax collection. Um, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next, uh, Aaron Thrower. No comment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, phone number ending in 797. Do you have any comment? Press star six to take yourself off mute if you have a comment. Okay, I guess 797 has no comment. Okay, the uh, time for public comments is closed. Uh, moving on um, to old business. Uh, update on, on ACMI. Um, I have uh, no update. Uh, I've been, you know, forwarding announcements and things about uh, legislation and uh, other activities um, as well. But there's, other than that, there's really no update at this time. Um, item B: Develop a three-year plan. Uh, that's next on uh, our to-do list. Uh, so we'll be working on that, uh, putting a lot of attention on that. Um, in the coming months. Um, any, any other comments regarding uh, the three-year plan at this point? Not the three-year plan, but the previous item. I did attend one of the, one of the sessions that you, rec that you forwarded us, and it was very um, educational. It was um, racism and in inequality with um, ch childhood trauma. And it was a great experience. There were a lot of great minds in that um, conversation. And it, it really helped helped me a lot to learn, you know, new vocabulary and just inform the community about like childhood trauma. And obviously they talked a little bit about the May being Mental Health Awareness Month and shared other resources. So thank you for sharing. It was it was pretty good. So Okay, hey, Maria, you're welcome. That, I'm sorry, President uh, says Maria, was that that one ACME one that they had? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I checked in on that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, it was good. I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, moving on to new business. Um, uh, Supervisor Gleese, I understand that the right in Kane. Uh, meeting has been postponed to June 1st. Is that correct? That is correct. And um, uh, as far as that, there's only been one. Uh, no, I take that back. None of the positions uh, changed. So I am still um, the uh, council chair for that, um, along with the RTA. Um, and the only the only update that um, we've been posted through Pace um, is you know they're still doing the COVID cleanout 
the COVID cleanup of the buses and all of the cabs, but we've been given a notice, um, especially for our JARC riders, to budget into their time an extra 15 to 20 minutes um, because we are entering construction season. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, a notice went out uh, to all of the riders. Okay, great. Thanks, Trish. Any questions for uh, Supervisor Gleese? Okay, moving on to the next item, update on tax collection. Uh, Mr. Avalar, we'll take your comments now. Please take yourself off mute. Thank you, President Setz. I, um, I do not know if this part of your agenda was to update on the issues that have been uh, arisen in the township. Certainly a lot has happened since the last meeting of the 708 Mental Health Board on April the 8th, starting with the events of April the 9th. <laughs> As we all know, on April the 21st, the township board uh, voted to pursue litigation at the, uh, through the 16th Judicial Circuit concerning the Kane County Clerk's decision with advice of the Kane County State's Attorney to not extend the taxes as a result of the referendum due to the issues with the tax cap law or the property tax uh, extension limitation law. The Kane County State's Attorney the following morning made it very clear that she presented her the case law, which is what provided her the input to do, give the county clerk the direction to not extend the taxes. And as of last Wednesday afternoon, the lawsuit was filed as a for a declaratory judgment with the next action date scheduled for August the 20th. Now, just, I'm not a lawyer, I can read. I know there have been plenty of letters sent, particularly the Citizen Advocacy Center out of Elmhurst dated April the 30th as a note from a community lawyer. And he barely touched upon the existing case law, but I th he did it as a beside the point. But in my honest opinion, that is just the point where I do, I do not think the townships pursuit of litigation is going to be fruitful. Obviously, that's a matter for the judges and the courts now and not going to argue that here is just my honest opinion. As I've stated, every time I've talked about this, I am for the 708 Mental Health Board. I voted for it last year. This has touched me very personally with mental health concerning loved ones and family members and immediate family members. I want the board to succeed. It has to succeed legally. It has to succeed right. And if we end up having to go back to the voters in March of 2022, based on what could happen in the next few months on the litigation, so be it. I live in Algonquin. I've lived in the township for over 26 years and no one from Algonquin can ever forget what happened nine years ago next month with the Cameron case and the case of abandonment in Tennessee because a member of the community felt they had no place else to go. That among other things that hit me personally, I really want the board to succeed. And as the new administration takes office next week, I pray that it's gonna be a seamless transition, a smooth transition, and again, Personally, I'm prepared. If we're going to have to go back to the voters, I believe the voter support is going to be there and maybe even stronger. And maybe that's a reason this has happened to make this stronger. So I leave this to the board and the in, I see incoming supervisor thrower is on the uh, call and I wish you the best and I'll definitely be tracking and attending meetings more in the future. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Avalar for those comments. Okay, so um, my update on the tax collection was merely to inform the uh, board that um, I think we're all I think we are all aware that the uh, the current trustees of Dundee Township uh, voted to uh, sue the county, uh, specifically the uh, county clerk's office. Uh, that suit was filed. 
as Mr. Avalar indicated, and there is a hearing on August 20th. Uh, that's, that's the update I have. So um, we'll see how uh, things uh, proceed from here. Any questions? Okay. I have, I have one. Sure, Cindy, go ahead. Um, did Elgin do the same? Uh, the 708 board in Elgin voted to file suit. Uh, they have not filed a suit as, as far as I know at this point, at least I haven't been notified that they have. I know they were in search of a lawyer uh, and where that stands, I, am, I don't know at this point. Okay. Uh, but the, uh, my understanding was that the Elgin uh, township board was not going to take up the idea of filing suit. That was the last I had heard on that on that point. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so um, you know one of one of our um, one of our goals for this first year was to. Uh, get the word out to the community about what the mental health board is about, uh, what services we have available. That second point obviously is on hold for right now. Um, and so I thought it'd be good um, at this point. I mean, we had um, targeted to start evaluating proposals, uh, but we put that on hold uh, because of the decision of the county clerk's office. So I thought it would be good use of our time to maybe talk a little bit about, um, you know, how we might want to use social media uh, to get the word out, inform people about what we're doing, um, inform people about our meetings, et cetera. And so I'd like to open discussion on that. I mean, there'll be, there are no decisions to be made tonight, but I think that it'd be helpful to have a, have a brief discussion on that and any suggestions that people might have around uh, around social media and uh, educating the community about the 708 board. Hey, Maria, one of the things I thought, uh, this is Supervisor Glaze, um, is that anything we did in English, if you could help, if we could do it in Spanish, we mirror everything. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean, I don't mean like if we did social media, I don't mean two different social media pages. Yeah. But I mean, like any, you know, I, like any post that we were do to document any meeting reminder that will be Spanish right. and English. Yeah. And mm -hmm. even even when we do the, you know, when you build out the, the Facebook page where it says description, we do it in English yeah. and then in Spanish. You know, that's what I thought we would have, mm -hmm. you know, both of them. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. And then like. We, we do have a small contingent of potentially Farsi um, or even like Polish, but I think we can work around that in, mm -hmm. a, in an as needed basis. Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. I think, I think social media, especially in the era of COVID and post-COVID, it's becoming more and more convenient for people to look at updates and see information via social media. I already manage one page and it is a lot of work but because you have to be, um, you know, monitoring comments, activity, engagement, pictures, posts. So it is, it is work and I just, I just wish we, there was a way of, um, you know, multiple people being able to like manage, which I think it's possible if, if yes. we share like the login information and stuff, but a, fa a fan page would be a ideal for our, our, our um, 708 mental health board. And I am familiar with starting a fan page because I started the one that I manage right now. Um, and it would just be a matter of um, making sure that Dundee Township is supportive of it and shares our posts and likes our page and encourage um, township residents to like the page mm -hmm. and just make it interactive, you know. Um, so yeah, I am, I like the idea. I feel like 
I, if I notice correctly, our next meeting will be in person. I feel like that would be a great opportunity to brainstorm more in person. How would that look like? And if by any chance we're able to get a projector, I can show you guys like using my web page, my social media page as an example, I can show you guys how I do it. And, you know, if we want to mirror that, that will be an, um, an option for us. Okay, I don't know if I can promise audiovisual equipment for the next meeting. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that a little, you know, a yeah. little further on down here. Um, no problem. So, um, but we do, uh, one person has approached me uh, and volunteered to help with, with social media. Awesome. Um, so she was unable to attend the meeting tonight because she had another conflict. Uh, but uh, she made it pretty clear to me that she wants to, uh, to be involved and, um, you know, to keep her informed about what's going on. So I'll try to get her to the next meeting uh, so we can have, have that discussion with her as well. I guess one question I have for you, Maria, is um, besides Facebook, I mean, should we be doing, um, uh, should we be using other, other social media avenues yeah. such as, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't do any of these, so, uh, <laughs> but Instagram or TikTok or. Oh, I'm in for TikTok. <laughs> oh well for the pe page i manage i do instagram as well the amazing thing about instagram and i love it is that it's predominantly focused on image imagery and video and um pictures so there's not really a lot of interact like like as an engagement component there's not like back and forth when it comes to posts or comments but um, it's great. It's a great tool to showcase um, events or activities or data that we want to share or pictures. Like I feel like Instagram is better for pictures. Facebook is more for information. Okay. And but that's that's just a very general. Um, Twitter. I don't do Twitter. I don't think it works for for fan pages like for community organizations. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, right. TikTok, I am completely not familiar with. Um, and it's funny because before I left the school, my students would use more TikTok than the other two. So it would just be so funny to, for, to me to not be like, finally, so that, you know, a new thing that I don't know. I don't know TikTok at all. I'm very familiar with Facebook and Instagram, but the other social media platforms are pretty new to me, okay. but yeah. Well, maybe we can recruit somebody from the school system to uh, a student who uh, who likes doing this stuff and has an interest in mental health and disabilities and oh yeah, you know, that would be things. great. A know, great idea. We, we can get yeah. somebody. It'd be a good uh, inter um, in internship too. Mm -hmm. I'm curious yeah. to know, um, Paul. Did you? Is this person that is interested in in social media? Did you meet that person at the event? that you attended yes that is so interesting i that's how i got into that's how i got into making the web page for my previous um for the page that i managed i went to an event and that person was there and he was talking about his project and i'm like oh my gosh this is an awesome project how can i help and i ended up um being yeah being involved with social media like that so i i knew i knew it yeah making connections that's always good yeah, and she's involved in a in a number of different initiatives in the community. So, great. Uh, you know, she seems to be pretty committed with her ideas and and things. So I think it would be good to to have her help us out. So um, awesome. I'll make sure I extend a personal invitation to her for the next meeting. Yay! Awesome. Uh, does anybody else have any other comments? Do 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 we all think this is a in general a a good idea to put some energy and, and thought into this? Yes. I had breakfast with an ex-marketing person this morning, and I'll put him in touch with you, Paul. He has some ideas. Um, he lives in West Dundee, old, old um, full-time resident of West Dundee, whose daughter overdosed. And um, he's very, very committed to um, the idea of expanding mental health services 
and he just published a book about part of his journey with his daughter um, on April 5th of this year. Um, and he is giving us, he is giving me copies for all the board members to have. Okay, great. Great. Yeah, put him, yeah, send him my contact information. I certainly and, will. And send send me his and, and we'll uh we'll figure out a way to connect up. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, Wendy or Cindy, do you have any thoughts? It's, Wendy, it's you're fine on. with me, but I'm not on Facebook. I'm not <laughs> on any of the social media sites either. Yeah. But okay. you're very visual. <laughs> yeah, but. And so um, we might use your opinion. <laughs> as, I, as I sit here, adult coloring book while I'm listening. Which is wonderful. There's a mental health adult coloring book. It's very <laughs> therapeutic. It is, especially well, would... color everything black. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Then you don't even have to stay in the lines. Um, no, I just want to say the more that we can be present on social media or whatever forum, I think that is great as I talk to people in my church and in my community and share with them what's going on with the refusal to fund and, and impose the tax they are furious. They voted for it. They saw the reason for it, um, but they hadn't heard that this was happening until I told them. So the more that we can get the word out there, the better I think it'll be. And that requires multiple platforms. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, Courtney, I know you're new, <laughs> but I'm do you have new any observations or uh, experiences you can uh, share with us? Yeah. I'm uh, yeah, being new to the board, and then also I am I tiptoe in the world of social media, but I did like what Maria was saying. If there's any way we can share the burden of the administr as administrators of the Facebook or what have you, I'd be happy to collaborate with her on that, and just so that to take some of the pressure off of her shoulders. Um, but I yeah, I'm i'm happy to share some of that burden but otherwise i'm not too great at social media but i can certainly throw in my creative creative sense a little bit too okay great i'll think on that okay thanks <laughs> okay well i'll put this on the agenda for next meeting uh so we can maybe discuss it in a little more detail and you know maybe uh set up a informal formal group to uh take ownership of this uh, going forward. So, okay. Well, that's great. Well, thanks everybody for that. Um, moving on to item D, development of bylaws. We don't have really any bylaws governing our uh, activities. Um, and we really need, we really should have them. I will volunteer to put together a draft for the next meeting for us to consider, unless somebody else wants to step forward and uh, take that on. Can we take okay, the, si the silence is deafening, so yeah. I, will, uh, uh, I, will, I, will, I will do that. I actually have a draft um, sort of in progress on that. So, um, so we'll take that up at the next meeting for discussion and approval as well. I just wanted to let everybody know about that. Um, and then um, the legislation requires us in June of each year to uh, elect a president and a secretary. That's what the legislation says. And any other officers that we feel are necessary for the operation of the board. So I just, I put this on the, on the agenda to inform everybody that this will be a, an item uh, that we will vote on at the next meeting. Uh, and you know, we will accept nominations. People can nominate themselves um, and we'll vote on that and that those people will um, hold those two positions for the coming 12 months beginning July 1. Um, Trish, I think you had um, some suggestions there. Um, just, just, I had two and that it's kind of picking, piggybacking off the, um, uh, some of the southern townships of Kane County and Bloomingdale is a treasurer and a vice president. Um, the vice president really only 
you know, takes the place of the president when the president's not available. Um, the treasurer, however, is the person who interacts um, primarily with the township, with the budget, the levy. They become the point person between the township and the 708 board. Um, and or can help direct uh, the, the management of caseworkers, executives, et cetera. Wow. Kind, of, kind of becomes the key matrix person too. Kind of watches every invoice that comes in, mm -hmm. which I, I, you know, right now in the first six months, you know, may not be a problem, but you know, you've seen you've seen how, in particular, how Pace's accounting is such a wonderful system. Yeah. Um, you know that you know, <laughs> um, you know th that would fall like on the treasurers. You know, to ensure that the dark riders, you know, are 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 within the parameters of what we set as far as miles, where they can go, et cetera, et cetera, and that they're not over billing us or double billing us. Yeah. That, that's just, that was just my thought. Okay. Anybody else? Can I ask really quickly, who currently is taking care of most of the invoicing and billing within the board? Or is, is anyone in particular doing that or? Well, there's, there's been really no, um, mm -hmm. since we have no funds. Oh, there you go, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there are really, really no invoices. The, uh, the township was nice enough to pay our dues for ACMI for, the, for this calendar year. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's the, the model, you know, the model that we're working on, had we have funds or when we have funds um, is, is that, um, we, we essentially reimburse service providers for the services they provide or depending on how their contracts are, are worded. And so a lot of the invoicing really has to do with service provision and ensuring that their, their billing is correct, that they can document the services that they delivered. Um, and then periodically uh, the contracts would stipulate that there would be periodic audits of, of uh, the work they were doing uh, and that it was properly documented, et cetera, that they weren't, um, uh, the way uh, the understanding is, and this would be clear in every contract, is that the 708 board would be uh, the, the last resort for billing. So if people were on Medicaid or had other, uh, or insurance, uh, that those entities would be providing the funds before a bill was presented to the 708 board. So uh, there are some complications around that in general, but because we don't have any operating contracts at this point, um, there, there is no work to do around that right now. Thank you. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Um, Personally, I think that having a, an appointed vice president would be helpful uh, because it would remove any confusion around, uh, you know, if the current president was a, unable to attend a meeting for whatever reason, uh, that it, there would be no ambiguity around who should run the meeting um, and should the, the president become, <clears throat> excuse me, um, incapacitated for some reason or move out of the township uh, or any other number of reasons uh, that there would be somebody who could uh, step in for that, uh, that there would be no, um, you know, no really no discussion. Everybody had agreed that this is the way it was supposed to happen and things. So I think electing a vice president would be uh, a good thing. Uh, it would, I can incorporate that into a dra into the draft bylaws as well as, as one of the positions. Um, I'm a little equivocal on uh, personally on the treasurer's position right now because it's really a moot point. Uh, but I think it's something that we, we can take up, um, you know, should, should things with the uh, clerk's office resolve in our favor in the short term or if this went back to, uh, uh, to the voters, 
uh, again, we're not looking, I mean, if it went back to the voters, we're not looking for fun, you know, we're not looking to have any money until, you know, 20, you know, June of 2022, basically, at this point. Uh, so I, my suggestion would be to table the idea of a treasurer right now um, and um, incorporate into the bylaws how we would go about doing that. Uh, should, we, should we decide to move forward if everybody's in agreement with that? Yes, um, I agree. I, I agree. Okay. So I'll take, I'll take that as the general sense of the, the board. I mean, we'll vote on it formally um, at the next meeting as part of the bylaws. Um, and then um, I guess in terms of the order of things, we'll have to, we'll, we'll need to approve or amend the bylaws and then we'll vote on, on a president, a treasurer, which are legally required. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, secretary. a president and a secretary, which are legally required and then a, and a vice president. Um, if we incorporate those into the bylaws. Okay. Is there a general sense that uh, that's the approach that we should take here? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have, I have a question. Does sure. anybody have any kind of um, timeline what the earliest we could possibly have our money in um, the, or the latest that we could have our money? Well, the, um, the hearing is August 20th. Um, I guess if there's a summary judgment against the county, uh, then the September tax bills would go out to collect the full year's tax for the 708 board, in which case sometime in the fall, I'm not quite sure when uh, the tax receipts come in uh, in the fall, but sometime in the fall, uh, I, you know, we would have money. Now, I don't expect it to be that easy <laughs> at this point. Uh, so uh, it's really hard to say. I mean, if, if there's a decision to put this back on the ballot in March, uh, then you know, presumably we would have money beginning in June of 2022. We do, we do not have to wait another whole year? No, I'm sorry, June 2023. Oh, it would be. It would be June 2023. Oh. Okay. Right. Okay, just curious. Yeah, no, that's, and, and it's, and it's, it's really um, frustrating that people have to suffer, you know, for another two years uh, for something that I feel was illegally done. That is the county clerk's arbitrary decision uh, not to calculate the tax. So it's a two year, two year delay. Especially after the one of the last emails you sent about the status of mental health in Illinois. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and in Kane County too. And I'll I'll pull I'll I'll send I'll send you all a link or, or I'll send the report the Kane County report on a uh, uh, survey that they did where mental health is the number one issue in Kane County. Yeah. Well. Period. Just. You know, so I don't, you know, it's, it's just frustrating. I'm sure all of you feel the same way. I cannot, I cannot emphasize how much the police social workers have had a huge impact in Bloomingdale Township. The four police social workers um, that are in place mean that every domestic event, that every home visit, is followed up within 24 hours by a social worker. It is reducing repeat police calls tremendously. Yeah. And hopefully I can get Chief Heron to come to speak uh, um, about how much um, he appreciates the extra funding for the one and a half um, social workers he has. Um, yeah, well, thanks for that, Don. I think, you know, I think that's a really important point. I also had a conversation with the president of Algonquin this week. And I think all of you are aware that McHenry County um, has a countywide 708 board. And the police department in Algonquin 
brought somebody on with a grant from the 708 board uh, that's now a full-time employee of the police department in Algonquin. And one of, one of the, and they have found it very useful. And if I can get her, I, I have her name, but I, I suspect I got to go through proper channels to, to have her come and talk to us. But, um, and I'll be working on that. But um, what the president of Algonquin told me was that um, they have found it very valuable. And one of the frustrating things is that for those calls that she's brought into that occur in Algonquin that are in Dundee Township, there's really not a whole lot she can do because we don't have serv we really don't have services in Dundee Township and uh, the services that do exist uh, aren't well coordinated and she can't send these people to McHenry County facilities uh, because they're not in McHenry Residence. County. Yeah. And so, um, and the same thing when I talked to the people in the school district uh when i talked about and you know you were in district 300 maria i mean you're somewhat you know cognizant of this as well but you know what they told me was the same thing you know they're you know they uh you know when they have people that need service um you know if they're in McHenry county they sort of know who to talk to and you know who to refer people to and 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 bring the right people to bear and the right services to bear but when it comes to dundee township they're sort of at a loss yeah and it's so funny because, and the district has certain resources, like for example, they can take a free intake the first time, but if it turns out that, that the student needs ongoing support, depending on insurance, you, you literally yeah. can, you don't have access. Yeah. Plus transportation is an issue. Local resources are very limited. Therapies are overbooked. Even my own therapy, therapist, she's overbooked like two and a half months and she's no longer unfortunately accepting new patients because she's she's overbooked so I, I'm just I'm just trying I put myself in in the position of like low-income poor parents with a language barrier that are trying to, their best to like you know be of help to their children that are going through trauma or emotional stress or or any sort of depression or anxiety, like it, there's, there are really very limited options and it's very unfortunate because yes, the schools have initial resources. They might give you like a packet with community resources, but basically after that you're on your own and insurance is, is that's a different type of conversation, you know, like some, um places don't accept all insurance and then some people have to pay out of pocket and they have to get a ride to the to the doctor then they have to wait they have to take off work it's just like so many so many layers to this situation and and you know i i have so many stories that i can share and and i'm sure that when our meetings begin to be like face to face like we can share a little bit more of what we do but it's just very frustrating very sad well, and, and, you know, there's nothing countywide um, and everybody, you know, everybody thinks there's these services in Dundee Township, which do not exist at all. Uh, you know, we can't send them to McHenry. We can't send them to um, Elgin. You know, you can't send somebody to Eckert. You can't send somebody to PADS. Uh, you know, these are all Elgin based. We have nothing in the township and that's part of the problem. And then you're right, Maria, the barriers that exist, you know, and the largest, you know, taking the insurance portion out of it, the next large, you know, largest barrier is the, the time of the parents, you know, if they're not at work, they're not getting paid. If they're not getting paid, they're not, you know, paying rent. Now we've got a cascading problem. Yeah. And then we've got the major barrier of transportation. I mean, we are not, you know, <clears throat> when it takes you, you know, three to four buses to get somewhere, um, you know, it, it's just, it, it just doesn't work. And so that's, that's part of, you know, obviously that is the, you know, mission of, of the community mental health boards, uh, 
legis the legislation is is to kind of you know fix those but there is no there is no stopgap i mean the schools um you're right I mean, you know, just the the regular school, uh, you know, child who has a problem, but now with the you know the school the twenty two you know the twenty two year drop off, um, I I've got two I've got two families where they are literally locking their twenty two year old children up at home um, while they go to work, and the doors are are locked externally so that they cannot get out intern, you know, they cannot get out. They are stuck internally. Uh, one, one family told me they take all of the knobs off the stove so that they, you know, can't access gas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, so these are a, and this would, you know, I, with, you know, without an evaluation, you know, these both sound like people that would have daytime caregivers or potentially, you know, could be, could be, you know, could be put into an AID, you know, program, um, you know, for job skills, life skills, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, we've all heard and, and, you know, Cindy can comment on, you know, the, the fear of aging parents. What happens? You, you can't rely, you, you can't force a sibling to take care of their disabled sibling. That's, you mean it, that's hard. Um, you know, and if there's not siblings there, they become wards of the state. I mean, and then, you know, Maria, you see the problem where, you know, they get in trouble and now they're in the police system. And mm -hmm. we, we love to incarcerate. I mean, that's, that's our fix for everything, incarceration. And, um, inst you know, and half of the incarceration, Wendy, am, am I right in saying half the incarceration? If they were, were as, as adolescents, if they had been, um, proper you know we could have stopped this you know it, I, I don't it, it, it's, a, it's a very preventive yeah, statistic is probably yeah. prevention statistic is probably higher than 50 percent okay of incarcerated people living with mental illness yeah yeah we're already talking about families who have already been impacted by the pandemic because right. we're also putting the layer of like layoffs and unemployment and families who already are struggling or have reduced hours. I remember before I left the school, this mom was telling me that she went from five days a week to two and a half. Mm -hmm. That's such a financial burden. And it's just like due to different COVID guidelines, they, restaurants are closing early or having adaptive hours, small businesses are suffering. So um, there are a lot of layers and I, I remember being at the meeting where someone said this is horrible timing to be doing this. It is the worst time to not have these resources available. Um, I think it was that meeting that we were invited to advocate for, um, for our board and people were just, you know, repeating over and over like, we're in the middle of a pandemic like this is very needed right now so yeah. Okay. FYI, there are some comments um, on our chat. I don't know if anybody is monitoring the chat, but I think Ms. Erin Thrower is um, mentioned, what is this board currently doing to promote services that are available right now? I don't know if we're supposed to be, I don't know if she, maybe she can't. Well, she can't um, talk. We, well, well, here, I think Trish answered, answered the first comment about, Oh. Okay. Uh, services and things in general, um, you know, with regards to private foundation and things. Um, well, yeah, I mean, any any type of funding would would be able to help for sure. Um, but um, quite frankly, um, you know, I think the right thing to do is is to um, execute the will of the voters personally. Uh, so. Um, and I find it uh, unlikely that uh, given the need in the township that a private foundation could even come close to meeting the need. 
um, that exist currently. So um, could it help? Sure, it could help. Uh, but um, you know, I you know I don't think that's the that's the solution here. So. Um, and 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 uh, President Sessler, the um, specific specific to like the past COVID funds or even the American Rescue Act, that is you know there are specific uses guidelines, um, you know rental assistance, uh, utility assistance, um, mental health is not any of this medical payments are not part of it um so you know you can't you can't divert um i know the township still has uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars um for COVID, but as as june 1 and jan july 1 come and all of the disconnection notices hits the township will run through those through that money you know within within months um it, it, and there is there is no legislation you know going forward you know to that you know the the mental health and and the you know the you know not to beat the dead horse but the state of illinois created a you know, the legislature created the community mental health uh, legislation. The legislation states, you know, township government um, or, or county government, in our case, or in specific, specifically to King County, it would be at the township level, is the responsible government body. We created the 708 board. You know, the $3.2 million that we levied um, just imagine, just imagine June 1st, all of the work we could have gotten done. Just imagine that. Okay, so are there any, any other topics for discussion tonight? Okay, um, all right, our next meeting will be June 10th, starting at 6.30. I have arranged for us to meet at the Sleepy Hollow Village Hall, located on Sleepy Hollow Road. Um, I think most of you probably know where that is. If you don't, you can give me a call and I can easily tell you how to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and we will meet in person. Um, we will require a mask at this point. I may change that based on the guidance from the CDC today. Uh, but for the time being, uh, I'm, that's going to be a requirement for anybody who wishes to attend the meeting. Um, and um, it'll be nice to meet you all in person. I finally met Don, <laughs> who thinks I'm uh, the Jolly Green Giant or something. But, uh, <laughs> I thought he was much shorter in the Zoom meeting. That happens to me too. People, when they, they haven't met me and they meet me, I'm like, I don't know why I thought you were shorter. I'm like five eight, and they're like, "Oh my God, you're a tall Puerto Rican." I'm like, "Yeah, we have tall people too." <laughs> yeah, and I and I have met and I have met Courtney, but uh, the remainder of you, I and I obviously have met Trish, but uh, the remainder of you, I uh, I'm looking forward to the pleasure of meeting all of you in person. Paul, um, sure. on June 10th, I. I'm scheduled to be on vacation in Wisconsin. Okay. Will I be able to call in or should I make a hell ride back from? <laughs> um, let me look into that, Don, and let, let you and I talk. Okay. Uh, because my arrangement with the village is that, um, uh, you know, we didn't have any other requirements to, uh, you know, for the meeting except for in-person meeting. Okay. Uh, okay. So, but you and I can talk about that. Right. Uh, or Paul, we could, we could have a, we could have a tablet with the, with either uh, FaceTime or Zoom for Don. Yeah, we could, we could figure, I think we could yeah. figure out something. Okay. Um, because I can phone in or um, I think there's Wi-Fi in Wisconsin. I'm not sure, but. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it's not real reliable. I've got a house in Sheboygan. Don, where are you going to be? 
Um, we have a, we've rented a cabin for the extended family up in Baraboo. So it's okay. not that far. Nice. Um, Beautiful. Um, we're going to go rock climbing and I'm mostly going to stand at the bottom and wave at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 uh, we'll talk to Don and, and, uh, okay. and see, if, see if there's something that we can, uh, we can do to accommodate you so you don't have to uh, speed back here for a meeting. Okay. Oh, I want to be at the meeting so I don't get elected for anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dawn has nominated herself for. Uh, yeah. uh, I know how so these things need to work. Bring anything, any anything that we need to bring to the meeting, so that I can put it as a note here for the minutes, or no, just your person. Just your person. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Goodness, I have to wear real clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sort of strange. I mean, you know, having to go out and, you know, seeing as, you know, my contact's been limited to, uh, you know, grocery stores, doctor's appointments, and, uh, you know, Walgreens or CVS. Um, you know, anything else, it's like, oh, I got to think about what I'm wearing these days. <laughs> <laughs> Which, as my wife can tell you, is something I usually don't worry about, period. So. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll meet June 10th at 6.30, Sleepy Hollow Village Hall. Um, and so I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So move. Thank you, Don. Second? I second. Okay, thank you, Maria. Uh, can you call a vote? Yep. Uh, Trustee Arimura? Aye. Trustee Bo? Aye. Trustee Borrero? Aye. Supervisor Gleas? Aye. Trustee Olden? Aye. Trustee Setz? Aye. Trustee Witt? Aye. Yay, we have seven ayes. Okay, meeting is adjourned. Uh, Trish, you can stop the recording. Stopping the recording now. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you.